Hello everyone and welcome to another uh, n apparently not so short news coulomb video as I uh, do some work on some of these Ford Ranger electric battery cells. So last time I was talking about Peukert's law and, and how you know it might not affect these lithium iron phosphate batteries uh, in the same way as it affected the uh, NIM and uh, lead acid batteries that were used in the Ford Ranger electrics originally. Uh, but, you know, another topic that I wanted to talk about is uh, C rate. Now, this is something that I don't think a lot of people really discuss, or at least they don't discuss, in my opinion, uh, it, with enough depth or clarity. It's a very basic concept with batteries, but es essentially the C rate is the, the rate of draw in kilowatts uh, relative to, um, the actual capacity of the battery, right? So in the case of this battery, uh, this is about a, well, let's just round up and say it's a 900 watt hour battery. Well, a 1C rate would be a 900 watt draw from this battery. So essentially it would be about 280 amps drawn at that nominal 3.2 volt capacity, right? So uh, that, that's essentially how you, how you would determine the, the C rate. And different batteries have different C rates in terms of both charging and discharging. And these uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, they tend to be uh, rated at a at a 1C rate. Now, uh, and that's both for charging and discharging. Sometimes they're a, a little bit better than that for uh, discharging if they're a smaller battery with thinner thinner electrodes. And I'm gonna move the, move the camera over a little bit, so. But just generally speaking, for, for lithium iron phosphate, it's going to be a 1C discharge and a 1C charge rate, right? So each one of these cells should never be fed more than 280 amps and should never be discharged at more than 280 amps. Um, and, you know, that will vary. So now I had mentioned the Tesla Model S modules that I had decided to use mostly because of cost, but one of the advantages they had is that they were actually very uh, high C rate, both in terms of charging and discharging. Uh, so uh, you, you could you could definitely charge them at well over a one C rate, typically maybe a two or a two point five C rate, and they could actually discharge at an even faster rate than that. Um, so I I believe. Uh, each pack was capable of uh, close to, even though it was a 22 uh, kilowatt hour pack, each one was capable of, of supporting a much, much higher uh, output rate than that. I think something like 75 kilowatts. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was, it was significantly higher. Like I said, almost a 3C discharge rate. So, so that gives it a really uh, big advantage in terms of uh, how how fast you can draw power out. And it got me thinking because I've seen a lot of Ford Ranger electric packs that were rebuilt with these lithium iron phosphate batteries, but they were rebuilt with the 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. And I actually think those just might not have been capable enough. And the reason I say that is the, the Ford Ranger Electric's entire system is basically built around a 250 to 280 amp hour current. I've heard uh, it could be as high as 300 amps, but I haven't seen that demonstrated anywhere. Uh, but in terms of the 300 amps would be during regenerative braking. Um, and the reason that's important is regenerative braking, I think, is the one area where those smaller lithium iron phosphate cells could run into, into issues, right? Because if you are doing a heavy regenerative braking with a 100 amp hour pack, well, you could be feeding 250 to 300 amps in there because the system doesn't know any better, right? The system is just assuming that you're running uh, the standard batteries for the Ford Ranger Electric and 
those lead acid or NIM batteries, even though they were only 20 to 30 kilowatt hours, those, those lead acid and NIM batteries uh, could have a, a very high C rate, right? So they were capable of producing uh, 80 to 90 kilowatts of output power, meaning that they could probably very reasonably accept uh, 80 to 90 kilowatts of input power if, if just for a short period. But even in terms of bursts, right, short bursts of input power, 100 uh, amp hour lithium iron phosphate cells just might not be able uh, to support that sort of energy in. And so it, it kind of gets me thinking that we might finally be to the point right now um, where the appropriate batteries for the Ford Ranger electric uh, powertrain are available. I actually have faith that these batteries can absorb a, at least a 1C rate, at least for a short period of time. Um, so I, I, think, I think they're a much better choice and a much better fit uh, for that Ford Ranger platform. And uh, I, guess we'll, I guess we'll see, right? Time will tell. But yeah, so that, that's one of the things, like I said, I just wanted to kind of talk about was this, this C rate for batteries. I'm curious uh, if you have a Ford Ranger Electric, if you've done any work on it that way, uh, if you have an updated battery. I know, I think it's uh, Ben Nelson um, at a, it's a 300 uh, MPG. I know he has a Ford Ranger that he updated the battery. And I think he was using the, I think, 170, 180 amp hour cells, uh, lithium iron phosphate cells, I believe they were. So he's probably um, a, a little bit better equipped with the batteries that he chose. Um, and, and again, a lot of it's going to come down to uh, just, you know, how you drive to be behaviors, high, high power output, high power input. Um, that could determine a lot, but yeah, so I'm just sort of curious if you've had, uh, if you had a Ford Ranger Electric and updated the battery, what your experiences um, have been. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. It, uh, you know, it just helps me to work through some of these projects and hopefully in, inform the community about how things work and, uh, you know, and hopefully I, <laughs> I get to demonstrate some things. So thank you for watching.